chickens came out of our crown. She couldn't imagine them with feathers. The car journey took ages. Mabel shared a packet of crisps with Emily and then felt sick. Mr. Thompson got very angry because Matthew kept saying, are we nearly there? Then suddenly, out of the window, Mabel saw lots of fierce animals with sharp spikes on their heads. Mrs. Tabby House had been right. Somerset was a disappointment too, more like winter. It was snowing. Rich Uncle Charles and Aunt Mary lived in a big, very warm house. But poor Mabel and Dad were taken off to a huge, drafty kennel in the stables. Inside, they found three snooty black Labradors. What time's supper? asked Dad. We don't have supper, said the first Labrador. We only have one meal a day, said the second. In the middle of the day, said the third. Dad pulled a long face. He was used to eating all day. Bonio, Bonio, wherefore art thou, Bonio? grumbled Dad. Very bad news, thought little Mabel. Next morning, by good fortune, it really was dustbin day. Dad saw the dustbins being carried out. But by the time he'd reached the bottom of the long, long drive, the dustman had emptied all the bins. Dad was very cross, although he did find a very old fish finger. When he got back to the kennel, exhausted, dinner had arrived, and the three black Labradors had pushed little Mabel aside and eaten the lot. So there was none left for Dad either. Round the corner, he found that Aunt Mary had just fed the birds. Give us a paw up, Mabel, said Dad. Standing on poor Mabel's back, Dad ate all the birds' food on the bird table. The birds were very cross. Come on, Dad, said Mabel. Someone will see us. They met some very fierce sheep who all ran away. Dad and Mabel ran after them, biting their woolly legs for fun. Mint sauce, shouted Dad rudely. The sheep went even faster. Next, they saw a fierce cow. Mabel was frightened. Why have you hung a rubber glove under your tummy? asked Dad rudely. Moo! The cow stamped crossly. Silly old beef burger, said Dad, as he and Mabel crept away from the cross cow. Mabel got sp on some barbed wire. Dad was pricked by some brambles. It is very bad news, thought little Mabel. It is all spiky. Then they met some pigs who were about to have their tea. Look at a beautiful sunset, said Dad, pointing. There was no sun at all, but when the pigs had finished looking for it, Dad had eaten all their tea. The pigs were furious. At that moment, round the corner, came the strangest ginger creature with slanting eyes, pointed ears, and a big bushy tail. It was a fox. I've seen some funny-looking dogs in my time, Dad said to Mabel, but this is the funniest. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, said the fox. We need a good feed, said Dad. No, anywhere. My name is Sandra, said the fox, waving her long ginger eyelashes. Wait until tonight, when no one is about. That night, Sandra came to fetch Dad, letting him out of the kennel. The snow sparkled in the moonlight. Oh, look, a zebra crossing, said Dad, walking rudely over some badgers. Sandra led Dad to the back of Aunt Mary's house near the kitchen and showed him the best dustbins he'd ever seen. Dad and Sandra fell on meaty bones, old shepherd's pie, pieces of stale Christmas cake, beef burgers covered in coal dust, all Dad's best things. He even took half a very old pizza back for Mabel because he was full up. But nothing for the black Labradors, who were very, very angry. Rich Uncle Charles was even angrier when he looked at the mess next day. Foxes have been at the dustbins again, he said. For the next few nights, Sandra called for Dad and took him to raid the dustbins. Dad rather liked Sandra. Perhaps I should marry her, he said to Mabel, and take her back to London. She could go out and raid all the dustbins for me and bring back lots of good things. I could lie in my basket by the fire all day and you would have a caring stepmother, Mabel. Mabel didn't like this idea. She didn't want Sandra as a caring stepmother. Sandra looked as though she might easily eat little Mabel on toast for breakfast. Very bad news, thought little Mabel, and thought longingly of her real mother, the tall and beautiful police dog. 
Every day, Dad went on annoying the Labradors and eating the birds' food and treading on the badgers and laughing at the cows and the sheep. He was rapidly becoming very unpopular in the area. But at last, it was the day of Aunt Mary's birthday party. Mabel was very sad. She and Dad hadn't been invited, nor had Sandra. You will not see me today, Sandra told Dad as they came home from their night's raid. There is a meet up at the village, so I shall stay safe indoors. Meet, said Dad. Meet up at the village. Ooh, that sounds good. Dad didn't realise it wasn't meat to eat. It was called a meet because lots of people on horses with dogs were going to meet in the village to chase foxes. That was why Sandra was staying safe at home. Little Mabel stayed at home too. She was very hungry and didn't want the Labradors to eat all her lunch. But Dad set off to the meet, licking his greedy lips. Soon little Mabel heard the sound of hunting horns and barking and thundering horses' hooves. Out of the kennel, she saw the hunt coming towards her. How beautiful, thought little Mabel. All those shiny horses and men in red coats and all those beautiful breed dogs. Oh, I wish I could join in. Then she realised they were chasing a fox. Very bad news for the fox they're chasing, thought little Mabel. All those men and horses and dogs after one little fox. Then Mabel started to tremble as she realised the fox they were chasing was not a fox, but her dreadful dad. She'd never seen him run so fast. The trouble was, he spent so much time with Sandra, he smelt a fox. Dad was very frightened. He hurtled along as fast as his little legs would carry him. Sandra will save me, he boasted, banging on her front door. But Sandra had hung up a do not disturb sign and refused to answer. Help me, panted Dad, banging on the badger's door. No way, grunted the badger. Zebra crossing, indeed. Help me, shouted Dad to the birds. Let me hide in your nest. Go away, sang the birds. You stole our food. Help me, shouted Dad to the cows. Move on, said the cows. Rebo gloves to you. The hounds were getting nearer. Dad ran faster and faster. Help me, he begged the sheep. Go away, you bad dog, bleated the sheep. Dad stumbled towards the pigsty. Let me stay with you, he pleaded. Go away, you ate our tea, said the pigs. The hounds were only a few metres away now as Dad reached the kennels. For dog's sake, save me, he panted to the Labradors. You ate our dinner, you ghastly mongrel. Go away, barked the Labradors. Dad bolted towards just as Aunt Mary opened the window to see what the noise was. In shot Dad, followed by the hounds. Straight down the table laid for Aunt Mary's 40th birthday, dragging crackers, spoons, forks, glasses, flowers, and candles with them. Telly-ho, cried Dad, sending the television flying. Into the kitchen he ran. On the table was a huge plate of chickens for the birthday party. Dad started to throw them at the hounds, but the hounds caught and ate them. Then he pelted them with the cream cakes. Finally, he picked up Aunt Mary's birthday cake and hurled that too. Aunt Mary screamed, Uncle Charles shouted, the hounds ate every crumb and ran off. Cloakroom. Help me, Mabel, cried Dad, rushing in. You are my last hope, and squashed himself behind a squash racket. Mabel longed to be brave. Her dad had snored all night and ate her food, but she loved him. She longed to be brave, but when she saw the fierce hounds barking in the doorway, she was so frightened she hid her head in Uncle Charles's green welly. Then she felt ashamed. She must help her dad. But how awful! Her head was stuck in the welly. Turning round, she shook her head back and forth, frantically trying to get the boot off. The hounds, waiting for Dad, suddenly saw this strange green animal, half snake and half bird, rushing towards them, snuffling and shaking. Now, hounds are not really very brave. It's a snake, whimpered one. It'll bite us. It's a bird. It'll peck us, moaned the second. The snorting and sniffing grew louder. It's a fierce monster. It'll gobble us up, said the third. It's a dinosaur. Run, yelped the fourth. The hounds turned round and ran away, and Aunt Mary hit them all with her rolling pin as they went past. She was nearly crying because there was no birthday cake or cream cakes or chicken for the party. Next minute, the strange bird snake came shaking into the kitchen. Are you all right, Mabel? said Mrs. Thompson. Not very welly, 
said Mabel in a muffled voice. Uncle Charles tugged the boot off Mabel's head. It had flattened her ears and bent her nose like a boot, but she soon looked all right again. Well done, Mabel. Hooray, said everybody, patting her. You were very brave and frightened the hounds away. Dad came out, puffing and panting from behind the squash racket. Just a running race with the hounds, he lied to Mabel. I was in the lead all the way. They couldn't catch me. But he gave Mabel a lick. The huntsmen were very sorry about the mess and turned up with more chickens, more cream cakes and an even bigger birthday cake for Aunt Mary's party that evening. Mabel had the place of honour and the biggest piece of cake and a blue paper hat because she'd been so brave. Seeing the good thing, Sandra peered greedily in through the window trying to catch Dad's eye. Dad took no notice. No stepmother, thought little Mabel happily. Very... Very good news.